All right, thanks for staying with us now. On December 19th, 2011, the United Nations General Assembly adopted um, a resolution 66 170 to declare October 11th as the International Day of the Girl Child to recognize girls' rights and the unique challenges girls face around the world. Ha! Huh. So, who do I start with? International Girl Child Day. I think there's so much noise around the girl child all the time. And I think for some reason, I want to applaud whoever it is that decided to start to make a case for the girl child. Because many things that we see today that are happening around the world globally, given the female gender opportunities would not have you know, happened if people did not really push forward you know, issues around the girl child or the woman you know, at the front burner. So, what are your thoughts on the International Girl Child Day? <laughs> it's great to have a day. Um, the gender, the female gender, as much as we say that um, savings have been smashed, opportunities um, have increased, we're still a long way off from where we should be. So um, having a day that just creates that awareness and reminds us that it is important um, and that the plight of the girl child needs to continuously be focused on access to education, access to choice, mm. to what you do, to um, not having to be a child bride, child to bride, yes. opportunities with your life, to not have to deal with things like VVF. I mean, there are just so many things that plague um, the, girl child. the girl child. So it's great to have awareness. I almost want to say, but I know that the boys and the men will come for me when I say every day should be International Girl Child Day. Um, Women hold such a powerful place in mm -hmm. society, in economy, in driving nations, in changing generations, that some of the atrocities that we hear that girls still go through just a beggar's belief at this time in our lives, in our generation. So um, great that we have a day, but so much more can be done. Absolutely. All right, ladies. So who are we starting with? Chinelo, what's your story for today? Okay. Uh, popular story, yeah. Asu Strike. So um, it said that um, they were going to cast their votes today and tomorrow. Hmm. So branches of the academic staff union of universities will commence traditional voting, which commenced today anyway, and tomorrow over the ongoing strike by the union. And the decision of various branches will be transmitted to the National Executive Council for final decision. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. It feels, it's been, what, February, and this is October. Hmm. That's eight long months of keeping students at home. I think that's the height of being unfair. And then you guys are still dragging this thing and saying, oh, we're still casting votes, oh, we're having meetings. Well, according to Semi Falana, he says that there's hope at the end of the tunnel. And he says in about 10 days, they'll call off the strike. So I mean, fingers crossed, hopefully they call off this strike that has set people back Oops, why is by it eight, eight months. months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> You know how I feel about the strike, so I'm not going to say anything because there's, there's, there's been a whole other show for that. Mm. Um, I mean, I just look. But, yeah. but so, at this point that we're in with this ASU strike, eight months, you know, if we've suffered for eight months, we'd not go to school. I don't want a call off and two months down the line, mm. we're still saying the same story. So Is are it we two sure? months down the line, or this has been happening since the nineties? Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Oh, please. No, but it Shall has not. We we've not had. No, but have we had this long strike? No. For this. In the history this. of this strike, like to be up to eight months. I don't think it's been. I don't think it's been. It's ever been really? this long. Really? Look, whether you are quantifying these last few months again, I want to reiterate. 1990s that's yeah. when strikes started. I know. This is the very definition of insanity. Please, can we move on? <laughs> okay. My own be say, let them share, please resolve it so that we will not come back to this matter again. Mary, your story quickly. Is it the same story again? <laughs> it's the same ASU story. But I'm hearing that all universities to resume next week, ASU calls off strike. Mm. According to a statement signed by Emmanuel Osedeke, president of ASU, on Tuesday, October 11, the strike which was embarked starting from February 14 hmm, is temporarily suspended. Hence, all students are urged to resume full activities from Monday, October 17. So I think there's uh, there's lights at the end of this tunnel. We just hope the tunnel doesn't close. <laughs> 
the tunnel which Again. the train has been passing through since the 90s. <laughs> Again. Let's have hope. You know they say definition of insanity. Bam. <laughs> it's doing the same thing so over and over again. And it's the difference. This hope and this faith that you are hoping for, mm. this is how we be oh, hoping yes. and wishing and we are still where we mm. very very much are. Oh, what yeah, else, it's sad. What else do we have? So again, like I said, and why didn't you go to a pub? which university did you go to again? Uh, do, do we open you in here? Not, this not, is not let's, the let's not do that. this, this here. Exactly, oh, ah. This is not the show for that discussion because, yeah, I'm yeah. not following you guys down this rabbit hole, but yeah, moving on. God, <laughs> moving God, on help, us. God <laughs> help us. God help us, honestly. Yeah. I feel sad. I feel really sad because, I mean, um, when you were in university, there was strike, and you're still sad. You should be outraged. <laughs> People should be fired. People should be sacked. People should. Please take your story. My story says. <laughs> my headline reads: Lagos bound train breaks down, stranded passengers panic. Sad, sad, sad that as we are talking about the release of the final set of passengers from the Abuja Kaduna train, that the Lagos Ibadan train now begins to have problems now. This is a problem for me. Travelers stranded on the train on Monday. Two different incidences where the train broke down. Um, claims that parts of the track had been removed. Um, and they were at some point on the train for over 10 minutes uh, with the train itself not moving and no explanation. Now, imagine all that you know about real travel, like we said, the recent um, incidences. And then you're stuck on a train that isn't moving. I can't even imagine being a passenger on that kind of train. Just, <laughs> it's too much stress. Now, when these trains are supposed to replace the hassle, and I mean, at one point it was like, woohoo, you just want to go on the train to you, but just for the hey hey of it, so you can say you've been on the train. <laughs> and it's not even two, two years, three years, and the trains are breaking down. You know what breaks my heart? Why would they be removing tracks? Like, well, what exactly? So, you no, know, we've taken that story on the show yes. before as well. We know that like, these things happen. But the point for me, which is sad, is, look, we create these things. I mean, it, it, it's still back down to the story that we, we have for today's topic. You create it. There is no process in place to protect it. There is no process in place to make sure that it's maintained. I mean, all of these things, it sounds crazy that somebody goes to a track. Not just that, yes, people will try. That's theft. That's human nature. But the fact that you're able to do it, hmm. it it's, it's the same thing. You're not bunkering with kegs. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> somebody can actually go... I mean, you've seen those train tracks. It's not a plier. Mm -hmm. It's not a spanner that you just use to... And just losing and remove. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you again, need some tools and machineries to be able to remove those tracks. That these things happen, right, just makes you ask the, the big questions of the how and the why. You know, um, sorry, um, Uti, you, you, when you posted this story, remember Lydie said that it mm. happened, this is, has happened it's two days happening. in a row. Exactly. She said that the day before, a, a friend of hers coming from Ibadan had said that they were stuck in Abiyokuta for over two hours. Like, so, look at this scare. So my question now comes down to, so is this... They eventually got to Yaba at 10 p.m. So beyond theft... There's obviously a maintenance Security, problem. yes. So my question is again, and I see these things happen all the time. We see infrastructure projects. And I see, oh, they've just fixed this whole stretch of road. And then a few months down the line, something is breaking, something is... Mm. And they're just like, is it a spirit mm. in Nigeria? Is it... What is it? Is it the quality of the materials? Is it... Like, I don't even know. Because I've, I grew up my whole life, I've heard we don't have a maintenance culture in Nigeria. We don't have a maintenance culture in Nigeria. Like, what is it? <laughs> On that note... Uncle Charlie will become the king. Yeah, <laughs> Charles the III king. will be crowned on the 6th of May 2023. So in the spirit of helping Norma represent her UK story. Excuse I have... me? <laughs> I'm here. I know you're British. Let us see. <laughs> I'm helping Norma. You are not taking their stories now. So the ceremony will see His Royal Majesty King Charles III crowned alongside the Queen Consort. Camilla. Charles Camilla. and Camilla. <laughs> That is another story oh, for another no. day. <laughs> but hey, congratulations to them. So we're looking forward to the coronation. Um, so we'll take a break now. We want to talk about this oil theft matter. Stay with us. We'll be right back.